Branson with GMAT Ninja here. Welcome to the 10th episode of our sentence correction series. In this series, uh, in this video, we're going to be covering comparisons. And this part one of two parts on comparisons. So in this video in particular, we're going to be going through uh, comparisons that are typically marked by the words like, unlike, as many as, or as many than, and then in contrast to, compared with, equivalent to, and the like, and others similar to that that will show up on the GMAT. These comparisons tend to be more mechanical and have a little bit clearer steps to follow. It's a little bit more obvious the steps to follow. And you'll see that as we start to dive into some of these comparisons together. There are other comparisons that are a little bit less mechanical on the GMAT, and we will cover those in the second video that we have on comparisons. But in this video, what we're going to cover is those clear, um, very mechanical comparisons. And again, we wish that encompassed all comparisons on the GMAT, but unfortunately, that's just not the case. And so one other thing, one other quick disclaimer, and you've probably heard this in many, many times in many different ways throughout our sentence correction videos, but as with other rules, you know, very few, few rules on the GMAT are 100%. And so don't turn off the logical part of your brain. You're looking for the best answer choice um, and not necessarily the right answer choice. But with that said, let's dive in and talk a little bit about um, what we mean when we say mechanical comparison. So you'll notice here on the board, I've got a couple different examples. The first one says this, unlike Bo, hummus was not Ruth's favorite food. So what I'm going to do anytime I have something like like, unlike, in contrast to, compared with, equivalent to, right? Because here I could say in contrast to Bo, hummus was not Ruth's favorite food. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at what is being compared with Bo. And you'll notice here that what I have is unlike Bo, so something's being compared with Bo, hummus. Unlike Bo, hummus was not Ruth's favorite food. But is it really that I want to compare Bo with hummus or is it that I want to compare Bo with Ruth? Seems like a more logical, a more sound comparison would be to compare Bo with Ruth and I'm comparing their different preferences. Uh, in terms of food. And so this comparison, I really don't like. I would like this sentence a lot better if it said, unlike Bo, Ruth's favorite food was, well, actually, you wouldn't even want to say that because you wouldn't want to say Ruth's favorite food. You would, unlike Bo, Ruth did not like hummus or something of that sort. Um, here in the second example, you'll notice we say here that fewer than half as many coins were found in the drawer than expected. So this is one that trips up a lot of students. But it's pretty straightforward. What you'll notice here is that I have, obviously, the fewer than is a comparison at the beginning of the sentence. And we will get into a, a little bit more comparisons like those in the second video on comparisons that we have. But you'll notice here that I have uh, a comparison as many coins were in the drawer than expected. So one thing to keep in mind is that we always are going to say as many as and not as many than. And so oftentimes you'll see the GMAT slip this in there where you'll have different versions of a sentence that have as many than or as many as. And as many as is always as many coins as were expected or as expected would be the proper way to frame the sentence. So both of these I don't necessarily love, but if I were able to tweak them, unlike Bo, Ruth did not like hummus or fewer than half as many coins were found in the drawer as expected, it could throw off students' brains at times, but um, that would be the better way to frame this. So with that said, we're going to take a look at uh, a pared down example from the official guide, tweaked a little bit um, first, and talk a, in a little bit more detail about how to deal with these comparisons, and then we'll dive into some official examples and look through those together. So why don't you go ahead and take a look at this question. I'm going to pop it up on the screen for a bit, and then we'll give you a chance. Um, to work through it.
Awesome. Hopefully you've had a second to work through this one. If not, you can pause it right here and we'll dive into an explanation. Um, you see the question states this, like other companies, attempts to expand took place at XYZ Corporation during the economic upturn. So we'll go ahead and we can talk about this one on the board together. But right here, you'll notice that we have, again, this video, primarily we're going to focus on those clear, direct comparisons that are fairly mechanical. So we have, like other companies, I noticed my comparison marker word there, got the word like, so I know I've got a comparison, like other companies. Okay, so what is then like other companies is the first thing that I'm going to ask myself. And in this version of the sentence, in the version which I have in A, what's like other companies is attempts. So are attempts like other companies? Is that logical? Does that make sense? Other companies are like attempts to expand. No, that doesn't really make sense. I wouldn't want to compare other companies to attempts to expand. If I take a look here at B, I have like other companies, XYZ Corporation attempted to expand. During the, so other companies are similar to XYZ Corporation or XYZ Corporation is similar to other companies. Um, that would make sense to me. So XYZ companies, XYZ Corporation and other companies both attempted to expand during the economic upturn. Totally makes sense. So I like B, took A out, keep it in B in. Here we'll take a look at C. And we threw you a little bit of a curveball here with C. And so I wouldn't um, freak out if, you know, this C was a little bit tougher than what you expected. But what it says here is this, is XYZ Corporation attempted to expand during the economic upturn as other companies. So I don't want to get into too much of the difference between like and as, because that's not really something we see tested a whole lot. Now, don't get me wrong, both of those show up on the GMAT, but generally the decision point doesn't come down to, well, is like better or is as better. What I have here is this, XYZ Corporation attempted to expand during the economic upturn as other companies but as other companies, what does that mean? Does it mean XYZ Corporation attempted to expand as other companies attempted to expand? Or does it mean that XYZ Corporation attempted to expand as other companies expanded? The, the meaning here is not super clear. And I could read this a couple different ways. And so because of that, because B is much more clear, produces a more logically sound sentence in a sentence where the meaning is very apparent, the meaning is very clear, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to eliminate C. Now, again, if you found C to be difficult, don't worry, don't freak out, because our, in our second video, which is our video on comparisons, our second video on comparisons, we are going to be getting into some of those less mechanical comparisons. And so that was just a taste of what's to come. And next videos, there will be a couple other questions in here we'll, where I'll point out to you, well, this is something that we'll cover more, more in depth in the next video. But you can see here really what I wanted you to pick up on in this video is the difference between A and B. A, I compared other companies to attempts. That doesn't make sense. B, I compared other companies to XYZ Corporation. That is a logical and a sound comparison. With that in mind, I want to dive into some official questions, and we'll start to take a look at some of these together and work through them. Let's take a look at this one here.
Awesome. Hopefully you've had a second to work through this one. The prompt says, unlike the virginal, whose single set of strings runs parallel to the front edge of the instrument, the harpsichord's several sets of strings are placed at right angles to its front edge. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one together on the board. So you'll notice here that, again, I have a pretty clear direct and mechanical comparison, unlike the virgin. Now, one thing that I'll note before we dive into this is this is that making sure that you're picking up on these comparisons and these definite errors in general and noticing all the definite errors or, or, or picking up on things in the sentence will make your life a lot easier. I could sit here and obsess over the fact that sometimes I have runs and sometimes I have run and make a big deal out of splits and which one of those two is right. But just because I have a split doesn't necessarily mean one is right and one is wrong. And it's not always the easiest way to eliminate something. And so here, what I see is I have, unlike the virginal, whose single set of strings runs parallel to the front edge of the instrument, which is one big modifier describing the virginal. So it has a single set of strings that runs parallel. So then my question becomes, okay, what is it that's unlike the virginal? In this sentence, it says, unlike the virginal modifier, the, uh, the harpsichords, several sets of strings. So here in A, I'm comparing the virginal to the harpsichords, several sets of strings. That's not a proper comparison. Comparing one instrument to another instrument's sets of strings doesn't really make sense. I would want to compare instrument to instrument. And so for that reason, I can eliminate A. And all of a sudden, this question, which initially looked pretty complicated, like there's a lot going on, and there is a lot going on, becomes pretty simple, though. Because here, when I look at B, unlike the virginal, with a single set of strings running parallel to the front edge of the instrument, big modifier, the several sets of strings of the harp, harpsichord are. So again, here I'm comparing the virginal to the several sets of strings of the harpsichord. So I'm comparing one instrument to the strings of another instrument. Not a logical comparison. I want to compare one instrument to another instrument. So I can eliminate B. With C, which has a single set of strings that runs parallel to the front edge of the instrument. Big modifier describing the virginal. In the case of the harpsichord, so am I comparing in the case of the harpsichord to the virginal, again, doesn't really make sense. I want to compare one instrument to another instrument, not in the case of one instrument to another instrument. Or maybe you say, well, it's actually comparing several sets of strings. But again, don't want to compare strings to an instrument. I want to compare instrument to instrument. So I can go ahead and eliminate C. With D, which has a single set of strings that run parallel to the front edge of the instrument, the harpsichord. Okay, big modifier right here describing the virginal, and then the harpsichord. Well, that's nice. Now I'm comparing, unlike the virginal, the harpsichord. So I'm comparing one instrument, the harpsichord, to another instrument, the virginal. That works, so I'm going to keep the in. In which a single set of strings run parallel to the front edge of the instrument, big modifier, describing the virginal, the harpsichord's several set of sets of strings. So again, I would, many people will be tempted, oh, the harpsichord, perfect. I've got the harpsichord, unlike the virginal, the harpsichord. But notice that harpsichord here is possessive. So I'm not comparing the virginal to the harpsichord. I'm comparing the virginal to the harpsichord's several sets of strings. And again, I'm comparing the strings of one instrument to another instrument when really, if I'm going to compare strings, that's great, but I need to be strings to strings or instrument to instrument. The only, so I can eliminate E, the only answer choice here where I compare instrument to instrument is D. And all of a sudden, a question which could otherwise be really complex and where I could obsess over all sorts of different things. Should it be run or should it be runs? Could I, am I okay with who's? single sets of string, whose single set of strings, or do I prefer which, or I, I could make a big deal out of all sorts of things like that, or do I like with, or do I like with, right? But 
if I just focus on the definite error here of the comparison and make sure that I have a proper comparison, a pretty complex question becomes pretty simple fairly quickly. And so that's a great example of we're looking at comparison, noticing the comparison marker, and then vetting that comparison, making sure that it's logical and that it's sound can provide a ton of benefit for you. Let's go ahead and I want to take a look at another official example together. I'll toss this one up on the screen, give you a moment to work through it. And after you've had a second to work through it, we'll talk through it together. Awesome. Hopefully you've had a second to work through this one. The question says this, almost like clones and their similarity to one another. The cheetah species homogeneity makes them especially vulnerable to disease. Uh, first of all, it is pronounced homogeneity according to YouTube. I looked it up to make sure I was saying it right. But let's take a look at this one together on uh, the board and we'll talk through. So what you'll notice here is again, I have a comparison marker when I see the word like, almost like clones. And again, almost like, same thing as like, I'm still making a comparison. So almost like clones in their similarity to one another. So I'm looking for something that's going to be like clones. And I'm also told that how they're going to be like clones. They're going to be like clones in their similarity to one another. Uh, but. I'm told that something's going to be like clones, and so I want to make sure that I have a proper comparison of what's like clones. Now, quick disclaimer. This question does have some pronoun issues, but because this is the compare, which are totally valid to notice pronoun issues, but because this video is our comparisons video, I'm going to focus primarily on the comparisons. So I have almost like clones in their similarity to one another, the cheetah species homogeneity makes them especially vulnerable. Well, here's the thing. Is, is the species like the clones or are the cheetahs like the clones? The species isn't really like the clones. And so it's more that the cheetahs themselves are like the clones. And so I can eliminate A for that reason. I'll also note that I don't love the cheetah species homogeneity makes them especially vulnerable to disease in the there here, because again, cheetah species, even though species has an S at the end of it, species itself is uh, singular. So I don't love that either, but that's why I eliminate A. With B here, I have the cheetah species is especially vulnerable to disease because of its homogeneity. Well, I fixed the pronoun issue here, but again, I'm comparing almost like clones. So what's similar to clones? 
the cheetah species. And again, that's something that I don't love because the cheetah species is not like clones. It is the cheetahs themselves are almost like clones because the cheetah species is not similar to the cheetah species. Cheetahs are similar to cheetahs. So I can eliminate B for that reason. Here with C, almost like clones, the homogeneity of the cheetah species. So here I'm comparing homogeneity to clones, but that's not really what I want to do. I want to say that the cheetahs are like the clones, not that the homogeneity is like clones. So that doesn't really make sense, and I can eliminate C. Here with D, homogeneity. Again, comparing homogeneity to the to clones, so I can eliminate that. And finally with E, almost like clones. Okay, what's similar to clones? Well, members of the cheetah species. So members of the cheetah species. Now, if you were looking at this without good process, not looking for definite errors, which we know you're not doing because you're watching this video, so you are looking for definite errors. But if you weren't, you may say, well, members of the cheetah species, way easier to just say the cheetah species or cheetahs, that's too long, that's too wordy, right? But that's not something that's a definite error that we look for. Here, I'm saying what's almost like clones are members of the cheetah species almost like clones? Yes, members of the cheetah species, also known as cheetahs, are almost like clones. And they are especially vulnerable to disease because of their, and you'll notice here I have their referring to members. I have their earlier in the sentence referring to members. And so it all works out, and E has a proper comparison, has the proper pronouns. Members of the cheetah species are almost like clones. So another example here where, and again, with these examples that we're giving you, particularly in this video, are examples with the clear, direct, very mechanical comparisons. In our second video on comparisons, we'll get into some less clear, less direct, less mechanical comparisons. But I want to take a look at another one together. We'll pop this one up on the screen, give you a minute to work through it, and then we'll come back and talk about it together. Awesome, hopefully you've had a second to work through this one. The question says that November is traditionally the strongest month for sales of light trucks, but sales this past November, even when compared with sales in previous Novembers, accounted for a remarkably large share of total vehicle sales. So I wanna talk through this one together. And as we talk through this one, uh, 
on the board, you'll notice that we don't have a like or an unlike here, but we do have a compared with. And when I noticed that word, and we, I kind of mentioned some, some words like that at the beginning in contrast to compared with, the, those words generally um, function similar to like. And so even when compared with sales or unlike, in contrast to a similar to unlike, but even when compared with sales in previous November. So when I look at A, the first thing that I'm going to ask myself is, okay, but sales this past November, even when compared with sales in previous November. So what are the two things that are being compared? Well, compared with sales in previous Novembers. So sales in previous Novembers is one thing that's being compared here. And what's even when compared with? But sales this past November, even when compared with. So sales this past November are being compared to sales in previous Novembers. That actually feels pretty good to me. I, I don't mind the comparison there. Sales this past November versus sales in previous Novembers. Fair to compare sales to sales. And so I will keep A in. When I look at B, but even when it is compared with previous Novembers, this past November's sales. Okay. So I have a little bit of a pronoun issue here that contributes to a comparison issue. I can't say that it refers to this past November sales because this past November sales is plural. And it definitely can't, sales is plural, so it can't refer to this past November sales. So if it doesn't then refer to this past November sales, well, what could it refer to earlier in the sentence? November is traditionally the strongest month for sales of light trucks. So probably November is maybe what it refers to. But even when November then is compared with previous Novembers, so I'm comparing this November to previous Novembers, this past November sales then accounted for remarkably large. Um, well, the problem here is this, is that I really don't want to compare different months. I'm really not talking about how November is different from November or how November this year is different from November last year. And really what I'm comparing is the sales of November, this, previ this previous, this past November versus November's prior to that. So I, I don't love the comparison here because I'm comparing just month to month. And really, I want to compare sales with sales, right? The point of the sentence is that the sales were higher, not that somehow the month was different. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate B for that reason. I, I And again, I also don't love the pronoun it here uh, followed by then this past November sales. Obviously, it can't be further this past November sales. So. When I look at C, but even when they are compared with previous Novembers, sales of light trucks this past November. Okay. So here, maybe I could say, again, I have the word they, so I've got a pronoun. I'm going to look, maybe they refers to sales. I don't see anything earlier in the sentence other than sales that they could refer to. So Let's say that they refers to sales of light trucks this past November. But even when sales of light trucks this past November are compared with previous Novembers. So now here I'm comparing sales to a month. And to compare sales to a month doesn't make sense. I want to compare sales to sales, not sales to a month. And so for that reason, I can eliminate C. I'm not saying sales versus month. D, so that compared with previous Novembers, okay, so I'm comparing something to previous Novembers. What am I contrasting to previous Novembers? Sales of light trucks this past November. So now I'm comparing previous Novembers to sales. Again, doesn't make sense to compare months to sales. Illogical comparison. I can eliminate D. And finally, with E here, so that this past November sales, even compared with previous November sales. Well, here, I actually don't hate the comparison. 
And so not everything in this question comes down to comparison. Actually, no, I'm comparing so that this past November sales even compared with previous November sales. So this past, again, here I'm comparing sales to sales, just like in AO's comparing sales to sales. I really don't have a problem with the comparison in the E. So if, you're, if you were able to get down to A and E, as far as comparisons go, you did, you did pretty well. Now, here's where things get a little bit tricky with E. And I'll just glance over this quickly because it's not really what this video is about. But so that implies that there was some sort of like, intent involved. So November is traditionally the strongest month for sales so that this past November's, but it, it, it almost implies like that because November is traditionally the longest, the, the strongest month for sales of light trucks, that that is the purpose of this past November sales, which doesn't really make sense. So the so that here is wrong. It doesn't serve the right function in the sentence and and it just implies something that that doesn't make sense sales november is traditionally the strongest month so that this past november sales were particularly large that doesn't really make sense that's not why november is traditionally the strongest so i can eliminate you for that reason but as you can see here focusing on the comparisons was able to get me down to just a couple options and to fairly easily eliminate a, a few of the different um, choices that I had. Let's go ahead and I want to take a look at one more and we'll pop this one up on the screen, give you a minute to work through it and then we'll start to talk through it together. Awesome. Hopefully you had a second to work through this one. The question says, in the United States, less than half as many multifamily housing units were produced in the 1990s than in each of the previous two decades. So this is a little bit different, uh, but still a fairly mechanical comparison that I'm looking at. But this will also serve as a good segue into our second video on comparisons and I'll talk about that in just a moment but let's go ahead and let's look at this one together on the board so here the comparison that I have is not a, it's not a compared with it's not an in co contrast to like unlike but I actually have the as many comparison showing up here and I also have less than um, showing up as well so but the, but if I look at the prompt here I should I see that it says less than half as many multi-family housing units were produced in the 1990s than in each of the previous two decades. So there's a lot in there, but what I first notice is that I have half 
as many multifamily housing units. And then obviously I've more produced in the 1990s than as many multifamily housing units than in each of the previous two decades. No, that doesn't really work. I want to say as many multifamily housing units as in each of the previous two decades. And so for that reason, I can go ahead and eliminate A because as many than is not something that we would say, which as many as. And so the comparison here, as many than ends up tripping up a lot of students. A lot of students end up going for choices that say as many than, but it doesn't work and doesn't work in this example either. And so as many multifamily housing units than multifamily housing units, no, as many multifamily housing units as multifamily housing units. So for that reason, I can go ahead and I can eliminate A. Now, I will also say there's a countable versus non-countable modifiers issue going on here. I'll touch on that in just a moment, but because it's not the focus of this video, I'm not gonna focus too much on that, except for where I have to. So here with B, I see that it says less than half as many. So again, I have the as many multifamily housing units, as many multifamily housing units have been produced in the 1990s as in each of the previous two decades. So what I actually don't, I, there's a few things that I don't love about this, but I actually don't have a problem with the as many multifamily housing units as in each of the previous two decades. So comparisons wise, I would be fine to leave this in. There's a couple other problems I'll briefly touch on them. Again, not really a focus of this video. We'll have, um, we do have other videos on this as, as well, but you see that less than half as many multifamily housing units have been produced in the 1990s, had been produced in the 1990s as in each of the previous two decades. The 1990s came after the each of the previous two decades. And so I shouldn't be using had been produced. Um, also, I in the more obvious and probably what I jump to first, if I was looking at B and I noticed the comparison was fine, is less, less than half as many housing units. Here's the thing, with multifamily housing units, I can count them, they're countable. One multifamily housing unit, two multifamily housing units, three multifamily housing units. Because it's countable, I should use fewer and not less. And again, not the focus of this video right now, but I could eliminate B for that reason. Now, when I go to C, there were less than half as many multifamily housing units produced in the 1990s than, again, I have as many than, that doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate C. I also have in C the less than issue that we just talked about. In D, fewer than half as many multifamily housing units were produced in the 1990s as in each of the previous two decades. I like that. I have as many as. I also have fewer than. And so I feel good about that so far. And finally, with E, I see fewer than half as many multifamily housing units had been produced in the 1990s than. As many than, as many than is not a proper comparison. And so I can eliminate E. Now, one reason, so fairly mechanical there with the as many as, as many than, you know, similar to how we were able to be fairly mechanical with the like on like and the um, in, in the in contrast to that we saw as well compared with all those we were able to be fairly mechanical with. However, here there's one thing that I want to note with D that will serve as a good segue into our second comparisons video. I have fewer than half as many multifamily housing units were produced in the 1990s as in each of the previous two decades. So really I'm comparing as many multifamily housing units as in each of the previous two decades. If you look at that and you say, well, I wish that it said as many multifamily housing units were produced as multifamily housing units were produced in each of the previous two decades. You're not alone. But that is that comes down to whether the meaning of the comparison is clear and whether it's clear that I want to compare 
multifamily housing units that were produced in the 1990s to how many multifamily housing units were produced in each of the previous two decades. If that if that sort of comparison issue throws you off a little bit and you're not sure what to do with that, stay tuned for our next video on comparisons. We will touch on those comparisons that are a little bit less mechanical and get into some of those issues that that um, pop up here and there where, okay, is this specific enough about what's being compared? We'll touch on those in the in, in, in our next video. But hopefully this video has been helpful to you and you've seen a good process for how to um, approach comparisons, especially when they're very mechanical. You've got like, unlike, in contrast to, compared with, equivalent to, or as many as, as many than. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. Make sure that you continue to stay tuned for the rest of our video series and thank you for joining us.